Okay, so today we are handling creating uh, your first Flutter package. So as the, as uh, she said, my name is Danvik Miller. I am uh, the CTO of Infinity Soft Technology and also a founder. So about me, um, I'm a organizer of Dreadcon KE um, and also Flutter Developers Kenya. I do mostly web and mobile. I've been doing it for a while. Um, close to eight to 10 years, if I include some of the years I was doing a bit of consultancy work while in campus. So uh, in general, I'm passionate about cross-platform development. I tried native Android when it was just, I think in Kenya at that time, it was quite new. Um, the reason why I'm very passionate about cross-platform technology is that we can be able to reach more, more people than than just targeting one platform as much as Kenya we have as most of the technologies, are, most of uh, our devices or mobile devices are Android, but it's good to have uh, experience in other technologies or b basically building a pl your platform where it, you can very easily port to another technology. So I've, uh, in my mobile experience, I started with the native Java Android. That was way back, um, a few years ago. Then there came a thing called Intel XDK. That was the one of the first Cordova platforms that uh, you, someone could use to develop HTML, CSS, um, apps. Uh, it was quite new at that point, provided by Intel. I know right now it may have been discontinued. Then later on, I joined mostly, I did web for since around 2012 to back to 2016 when I, when I came back and needed to do, I, to, do, to do mobile, I found that my web technologies were higher than, than, uh, than mobile. So I started with Ionic, which I could do both web and uh, and mobile. Then I did native, native script for a while. Native script is kind of like uh, React Native. Basically, it's uh, it has better performance a bit than Ionic, which is just Cordova based. Um, then uh, in August of 2018, I I discovered Flutter, and from then it's been Flutter all the way. Uh, right now, even my my web, I'm even transitioning from mainly web to 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 mobile because of Flutter. So I've developed a couple of of, uh, of Flutter plugins. Uh, let me just I will end show so that I just show a few that I've done. So the one of the most successful is uh, Flutter from Builder, which uh, has for, got quite a number of user, usership because because of I was plugging a hole that was in Flutter for people understanding how to deal with forms and that made people find my package very useful and from then they picked it on up and apart from that I also developed a package called Flutter Chips Input, uh, Flutter Touch Spin and others which are just uh, kind of plugins for my package like Flutter from Builder File Picker, from Builder Map Field. Those are just, I couldn't develop as part of the main uh, plugin, so I started a separate repo to handle such things. So those are the couple of packages that I've developed. So um, let me just continue then. So why would you want to create a package? So number one, the usability. If you are creating something in your app and you see there, there's need for me to, maybe I'll need this later or someone else may be struggling with this. Let me out, open source it so that people can be able to use it. That's a good, um, that's a good starting point. Uh, number one, number two, community. Maybe you want to share. Uh, as much as you have your solution, you could as well just build your own library and maintain it on your computer and not use it for usability sake for usability sake but uh number two for community you can also use uh, the plugin to share with people number three you enhance your rhythm as and or profile 
basically you boost your profile by by having a couple of uh, open source um, packages out there that people can use. Number three is learning. This is one of the most important. In fact, for me, it should have been number one because I've learned a lot. Th this package I started from Builder. I started developing it while I was still new to Flutter. I was like one month old in Flutter. I wanted to do something with forms. I couldn't find a good. Uh, I couldn't find good documentation, so I went ahead and created a package that I thought I would just use because at that point I wanted to create an app that was heavily reliant on forms. So I started working on on that, and then uh, after a while I need I saw the need for me to to share it out there. If you look at uh, my version one of the package, you'll just be laughing because it was like my you could see my lack of experience in, in Flutter, but still so, so many people found it useful and it made me transition to the next versions and improve it further. So uh, how to get started, number one, uh, there's a bit of uh, understanding that you may need to do. Um, there are two types of, of packages that you can develop for Flutter or Dart in general. So there's Dart packages which are generally just developed in Dart. Uh, just for the sake of, uh, if you want to, basically someone who is using that directly can use it, doesn't plug in with any other cross-platform development pl platform like Android or iOS, it's just basically pure that. An example of that is, uh, is the path package by the Flutter team, or the Dart team, sorry. So uh, the, the, the next, the next uh, type is the uh, plugin packages. So plugin packages are specialized Dart packages that contain an API written in Dart plus uh, one or more cross-platform uh, implementations. For example, if you want to do like a camera, it has like you have to integrate with Android, write Kotlin or Java code. If you want to, if you want it to work with iOS, you will write um, one for you will write. As part of your package, you'll have APIs that, that uh, interact with iOS uh, in uh, Swift or Objective-C. Or if it's for Windows, you may have to use something like uh, C, C Sharp, or any, any other platform, Ubuntu, uh, Mac OS, you'll have to develop uh, for that platform as part of your package, in just including uh, that and that specific API. Um, if you want to develop a plugin, first of all, find something that is useful so that people can use. Don't just think about like, I have a very, this very cool button. I can out open source it, the, 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 the usage for it, because just maybe you, you con you've uh, made a container, made some gradient on your uh, button and it looks nice and you want to open source out there. It may not have um, very much impact in the, source, in the community because uh, maybe, the usage for it may be very limited because someone else can create something similar and so on. But now that Flutter is relatively new, there are so many things that you can develop to plug in the, the holes that are there in, uh, in, in, in Flutter so that other people can make use of them. We've seen a lot of uh, state management options being developed, um, just basically porting Android and iOS stuff to to, to, to Flutter so that people can, can use. And in fact, uh, as I was saying, Flutter is relatively new, so you can start with something, if you are from a web background, you can find something that is in web, but that is not in Flutter, and find a way of porting it over so that uh, you will help yourself as much as others. Um, and generally, you'll always just find the things that are missing or something that, Maybe there's an abstract way of implementation. Let's say, like my example of forms, there, there was an abstract way of uh, of working with forms, but making it easy for people, like the way uh, navigation. There are so many navigation packages that help people. Like they kind of dumb down the the abstraction from the from the from the Flutter team or the from Flutter SDK for people to use easily. So for you to the um, 
publish a, flat, a flatter package, you'll need, you'll need a Google account, which I'm sure most of you will have. You have your Gmail, you have your WhatNot YouTube account, as long as it's a Google account, that's what you need to package, to publish uh, uh, your app in uh, pub.dev. So uh, how do I structure my package? I've tried to make it easy so that there are things that are optional, the ones that uh, in my slide, the ones that are not in bold are optional, but the one maybe in uh, in bold they are they are, they they are considered kind of mandatory. Though some of them you will you may you may go without, but it, it they they there'll be a cost. So whatever I have in in uh, let's say my package I've developed a new I'm developing a new package I've named it my package. So number one I'll have a lib folder where I will sorry where I will um, put all the, the the source of the package, and then I will have like, like my package or that which is which should uh, match the name of your of your package. So if my 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 package the the name is my package, then you'll have my package or that. But um, if it becomes a bit complex, you may need to break it down. So I would advise that you make a source folder that you'll place all the all the um, files inside, basically, as you up, as, as you make different files, you may have to you may want to store them uh, in your source folder, and then use the my package dot that as just as a barrel for exporting, so that someone just exports my package dot that when they turn when they're trying to use it, and it in turn exports all the other packages in your SRC. Those the SRC is not is not. Uh, it's just a convention, but not really necessary. You can have all your logic in your my package with that. Then we have test. I think test is optional. I may have made it uh, bold. Then we have a change log where you will be documenting the changes as you go from one version to the next. Then we have a license file. A license file is very is very useful, by the way. And uh, I would advise you not to put any open source uh, thing on. GitHub without putting a license. Some people will, will if you publish without without uh, without having it there. Some people will ask you, how do I use this? Am I allowed to use? Or also, uh, one of the most useful uh, things about the license is that you will maybe declare that uh, this package I offer it as it is and. I should not be hold, held liable if your app breaks because of my package. Basically, that is like you want to distance yourself from any 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 problems that may come along because you may be as much as it's very hard for you, even if you open sourced it. Like if you don't specifically say that this package uh, don't hold me liable if my your app breaks because of this package. Maybe a very big app is using and it brings down. They may sue you because you provided this and it's breaking. So always include a license and then your license. There are several options you can choose for licenses. Make sure you choose the ones that op are open source friendly and you just copy, mostly just copy the, the package, the, the, the licenses from online, look for the MIT package, BSD, or so on, and then just uh, include it in your, in your, your you just create a file called license and include it there. Then you'll have your pubspec.yaml which will place all your dependencies and give more information about it. We'll come back to it later. Then a readme where you will be explaining to your users to your users where, how exactly to use your package. Now we'll go back up again. You may need to create an example pack, an example a folder where you just create another Flutter app that will kind of uh, show, show users how to use your package. Number th uh, then the last one, you can have a doc folder where all your documentation will be will be will be stored but documentation in this case will be auto generated for you uh, will will when we get there we'll just see how it is done then i would also in insist that you have testing done for you to make sure that everything is working fine before you publish the next uh, your next version of the app so the pub spec file what is what does it in entail if anyone has developed a flutter package i'm sure um, a flutter plug um, app I'm sure you, you've seen the pub spec file, and it contains quite a number of sections which you can be able to edit and uh, whatnot. So 
most of you may be familiar with what, what we are discussing here. So the name is basically the name of your package. You will include it there. And the version, for if, if you are developing a package, it's very, it's mandatory. If you're developing an app, maybe, okay, mostly, mostly an app will also have one. So uh, it's required by the package so that you know which version of the app you're running. Description just shows a bit of description. This is what will be shown in your Flutter app on the, on the first page, showing the users what this is and what it's all about, your package. So you may have an optional homepage where it's just a URL. If you have a separate website for that, for that package, you, include, you may include it there. The repository, you may, have to, you may want to point your users to the repository where, where the code is hosted so that if anyone wants to see, they can see. You may include an issue tracker to show where, if, I, if there's an issue, where do I post it? Documentation, you may have also a URL for documentation. You'll see like some packages like uh, provider, they have their own website with documentation and examples, several examples. You may have, we may want to have something like that. Then there are dependencies. If you've developed a Flutter package, a Flutter app, you know that you may include a, a few dependencies. One of them will be, will be obviously Flutter, uh, SDK and whatnot. Um, dev dependencies can be used uh, during development time, but are not really packaged. Uh, they're not packaged and published on the on pub.dev or on your app. So these are things that are mostly shared between app and package and packages. So dependency overrides. If you need to override some of the dependencies, uh, this is where you will do, because you may find some dependencies, you have dependency A and B, and maybe they have transitive de uh, dependence, dependencies that, that, uh, that clash, you may want to stick to one, so you can use dependency override for that. And uh, also, the other, the other things are optional, like the environment, executables, and publish too. So all the other fields that you may, you may include, in uh, in pub dot in in uh, your pub spec file will be ignored because those are not needed. For example, you may have a field for author, which uh, the it's not it's not needed because you're publishing your app and your identity will be known at that point. So pub dot dev usually ignores uh, any extra fields, though there are more extra fields that you can put in your pub spec dot yaml file. So. Um, one of the things you may want to, to, to take note of is uh, how, how is a Flutter package, how, how are the metrics done? Because if you are maybe from the Node.js world, there are, there's NPM, um, what, what is it called? NPM.js, basically the, 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 the website that uh, shows that where you publish your app. There we have the number of downloads per week, but in um, in pub.dev they have done it a bit differently because they felt like the number of downloads do not really show uh, well how how well your app is. So they've included some other measures, for example, likes. How many likes your package have, have, has may just show how many like how developers appreciate your package. Basically, it's just a raw measure of the overall sentiment of the package from other, uh, your peers, basically the fellow software developers and uh, engineers out there. So the more the likes, the, the likely it is, maybe you are comparing two packages that have been published out there. So the more likes, the more likely it is that that package is well maintained and very useful. So then there's um, pub points, which is a measurement of quality. Uh, Pub.dev, you'll notice that it's very strict and very uh, focused on quality of your code. They look at things like your coding style, your platform support, how, how maintainable is your app. Such things, they are so keen on it, on it uh, because they found that the other metrics, like, for example, just the number of downloads, there may be downloads that are being done by, done by CIs and whatnot. So that's some, something that they, they wanted to include, though they may be planning to include it later as uh, indicated on the, on the, in the documentation for publishing packages. But mostly, they are, it's all about quality and maintainability of your code. So 
So popularity also measures how many how many developers you use your package. So the more popular it is, basically it means that more people are downloading and using your packages or your your package or packages. So usually it's done like for the past 60 days, how many people have downloaded your app? How many people have downloaded your your package? So uh, usually um, when you go to pub.dev, I think I will just show you a rundown of pub.dev so that you we understand how these things are done. Uh, let me, let's do it here so that we don't come back to it later. So if you go to pub.dev, let's open one package. So these are the likes, this is the number of people who are, who, who are using the package and have found it useful. Uh, the pub points, basically this is your measure of, the measure of your qualities out of 110. So um, here you will have, you'll see that some of the, some of the issues, basically the, the more strict you are on the quality and the basically documentation and so on, the more points you get. Popularity basically is how many people are using your package. So uh, popularity, the popularity of this package is not 97%. So let's just open one and see. Basically, it will see you've provided a valid uh, pubspec.yaml, very, very important. You have provided a valid readme file, very important. So you get points as per the the quality that uh, this package automatically checks and updates every time you upload your package. As I said, documentation is very important. So if you, the more you document your code, the more, the more points you get. For example, this we've been deducted like 10 points for lack of document, basically for documenting, not having all the code documented. Uh, then the support for platforms. If you apply, your, your plugin supports all platforms, uh, which is iOS, basically the, the, currently, the currently supported plugins in, I think better going forward with Flutter, the better versions of Flutter going forward, you will be given points. So if it supports all the three, then you'll get all the 20 marks. Then there's a static analysis where they will check for Deprecation, basically if you're using deprecated code, maybe you're, using, you're not using uh, the naming conventions. In, in that, maybe may, mainly we use uh, camel case. If you use any other kind of type of casing like Pascal or, uh, or any other type of case that is not, is not supported, then for your code, then you will be, you'll be, some points will be docked off you. So another thing is, uh, up to if you're using up to date dependencies maybe which flutter version has is the latest of your package supporting so you, you have to be very keen and be checking and updating your package because the moment another package is updated and yours you haven't updated to, to the next uh, version that is compatible then points will be deducted maybe you started off at 110 and from one at one point uh, you haven't been maintaining your code, so you deduct, you get deducted a bit of points. So you have to be, make sure you have to make sure that your your app, your package is maintained uh, as you as you go on. So uh, let's just come back. So the next thing, how to get? Uh, I think I, I may have jumped the gun here, but how to get the maximum pub points? You have to follow the file conventions, maybe naming of files. Naming of files usually Flutter uses underscores. Basically, if you are usually if you name your if your file is uh, you have a class called my 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 package, then it's expected that your file naming is like my underscore package, and the class name is uh, my package starting with with the capital casing. So make sure you have a license. If you don't your points will be deducted. Make sure you have a readme that explains how your package is used. Otherwise, your points, might, your points will be deducted. Make sure you have a change log showing from this version to this version. Maybe in, like, uh, later on in the, in the presentation, I'll show you how, how, how it's done and uh, just show how, see how, how, how 
how you do your change log and your, your documentation. Another thing is that uh, you have to provide documentation. Basically, inline documentation is very important. That is why, that is what Flutter will use. Let's just go back again. Uh, let's go to this package. There's this section of the, your API reference. Let me use another version, let's say this one. So when you go to your API reference, you will see that the, all the files I have here are documented and if I open one, all this documentation is coming from the inline documentation that you provide in your app. Let's say for example, uh, you have, you have a, a property, you have to offer documentation. Let's just go to an, use an example here. So you, you include, uh, inline documentation in your in your package. So for this class, I have I have this uh, yeah I have this uh, this uh, field or this attribute. I provide documentation for it by just including the the three slashes and just giving a paragraph about how it how how it works and so on. So this is what this is auto your your. API, the, the API reference is auto-generated for you, but it's generated from the code, from the documentation that you've given inside your code. Basically, this, this is what it will be used to generate your, your documentation for, for your package. So that if anyone has a question, they will just come here to the API documentation, look for the file they want to reference, and they want to understand like what does this auto-validate mode mean? So basically, this is what it does, that's how you explain it. So basically everything that you have, you just document which type of, what, what kind of, what type is it, basically what type it's expecting, the name, and it will be generated for you as long as you provide the documentation. If you don't, points will be deducted for documentation. Another, another thing you have to do as part of your documentation, which, which is very helpful, is uh, uh, include an example. An example, basically just another Flutter app inside your package that someone can run to show that this is how to, to see that this, this thing actually works. So we will also see that when we go through a bit of a demo. Then we have to support as many platforms as you can. If you don't support all, maybe you may have like se separate packages, but as much as, as well, as much as you support all of them, the better for anyone using, using your package. Very another very important uh, issue is uh, you have to pass static uh, analysis. Basically, if your code con contains any errors, any warnings, for example, as you as you had seen in my package, there's a warning for deprec using deprecated code. That's a warning. Points are deducted if code is not linked very well. For example, you haven't followed the that conventions. Points will, points will also be deducted for that. So you, are very, you should be very keen on that. And you see, the reason why we have points is because we want to know how good your code, your, your package is, so that I can compare. If someone is offering another package similar to yours, which one is the better one? So this is very important. So another thing is support up to date dependencies. So the data is decay. Are you supporting the latest one? Flutter is decay. The latest Flutter is SDK so that if anyone has the latest one, they can be able to use your package. Number three, if you're depending on any other dependencies, any other packages, are they are using the, the ones that are up to date? So before you before you publish, uh, here's, a, here's a checklist. As we said, uh, license readme, update pubspec YAML to, in, to to reflect the latest version of the app of, of the package before you publish. So that basically this is where public dev reads with, with what is the current version of the app. So uh, make sure you have you update you update uh, changelog uh, md, which is just a markdown file showing the changes. So there are a few commands that you can run before before you before you publish, just to check that everything is done. So you can run Flutter Analyze to check to do the stat static uh, analysis of your dart files. You can format your code because if you don't format your code, basically, by formatting I mean mostly indentation. 
and spacing. Basically, if spacing and indentation are not done correctly, also it will it will do that. But Flutter has a, a an e and a very easy way of doing this for you. You can also run, you can also format your tests uh, just to make sure that all your code is formatted well, including the example, which are optional. You can run dot that doc. That doc is the is the dart a uh, command line utility that that generates uh, the API reference as we've seen in in pub.dev. So that you can generate your own. It's optional because um, as you upload your package, uh, pub.dev will run that doc for you. This is just if you want to see how your code will look finally. But here, you, you don't have to do it. So finally, you can do a, a pub, pub publish dry run. Pub publish is the, the command you do to publish now your app to, to, to pub.dev. We will, we will see that in a demo. So you can do a dry run first. If there are any warnings, it will tell you. Then before you finally run the publish. So just to cover your bases, you can run a dry run. If there's anything missing, uh, that is very intelligent and Flutter is very intelligent. It will let you know that this is missing in your code. Maybe you don't have a documentation. It's maybe maybe you don't have, uh, you haven't included the changes in your change log. Maybe you don't have a readme file, anything like that. It will notify you before before you go ahead. Also, I forgot to include. Also, if you have tests, you can run them at this point before you before you you publish. It's good to run your tests. See that you've not done anything that has broken uh, previously written code. Finally, miscellaneous. Uh, I'll just insist on a few things. Um, testing. Make sure you test your code. Use something like analysis. You can include an analysis options YAML file just to make sure that your code, your code follows the that that, that um, analyzer settings. You can set your own that analyzer settings, but I would advise you to just go to. Sorry about that. Which is done. I can advise you to just go to pub.dev and look for something like uh, pedantic, which is the which is which which are the analyzer settings that are used within Google. So if you use pedantic to 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 analyze your code, there there are few chances that your your, your package will will reach pub.dev and be denied because this is what Google are, are using internally. This just sets the the code the the analysis options for you to use during development. If you've used any, there are so many other uh, others that are out there. You can just look. Uh, from pub.dev and include them in your in your code so that it does static analysis typing for you. If you're using something like Visual Studio Code of uh, or Android Studio, you'll be able to see the, there's an analyzer tab that will show you where you're you're, you're you're making mistakes. The mistakes may be not not may not make your code not run, but basically just follow standards so that your your development is uniform across all files and basically if most of the code is not run is not is not does not have to be understood by by a compiler it's people reading it that have to understand so if formatting is done correctly then you are, you'll you'll have less problems for anyone who is reading and helping you maintain your code so another thing that uh, maybe i felt it may be good for you to to, to have a look at is uh, semantic versioning there's a whole site about semantic versioning which you can use to know, like, how do I, how do I version my code? Like, let's say from version one to version two, what makes me go to version two? What makes me like change the major version or the minor version of the patch? So basically, if your if your code is version one point one point zero point zero, what makes you go to one point zero point one or one point one point zero? Basically, semantic versioning, you have to, like, it's good to follow it. You don't want people, depending on your code, to have their code broken just because you used a wrong uh, versioning method. Because, for example, if you use, if you include breaking changes in a patch or a minor version, someone maybe uh, have specified just take the, the latest version and then you break their code. It is not, it's not, uh, it's not advisable for you to do that. 
also uh, make sure you tag your versions. Uh, we will see that when we do a demo. Um, understand dependency overrides. Sometimes someone may be using your, your, your package and then they are also, your package is depending on a package that they are also depending and they're depending on different versions. So uh, you may have to, to explain to your users that they can do dependency overrides. This is something that I experience so much because someone is depending on, let's say, someone depending on maps and my, and my package is depending on maps, but we depend on different versions. Then uh, pub.dev does not, the, the, the pub get does not work because we are depending on different packages. We can use dependency overrides to make sure that you stick to one version. Then get familiar with GitHub if you haven't, or Git in general, the Git ecosystem and the GitHub ecosystem. Those don't have to use, to use GitHub. You can host your, your code on GitLab, but most open source packages, you'll find them on GitHub. So get acquainted with GitHub because you need to handle issues, you need to do versioning, you need to handle uh, pull requests from people, which are also called merge requests if you're using GitLab and other uh, platforms. Just get acquainted with GitHub, know how it works, know how to like review other people's code. Someone may be helping you maintain the package, so you need to know how to, how to um, analyze their, their changes and be able to merge them in and so on. Uh, the final thing is uh, there's a thing about uh, verifying your 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 pub creating a, a verified publisher. This is just to include to increase our uh, confidence in people in 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 people using your package. So I think that is all from this uh, side of things. Maybe we'll come back to the slides later on. So for now we can do a demo. I'll just uh, lucky for us. I've made some changes to to my package and I just want to show you how, how we would go about um, publishing them. So let's go back first. So here is my package. Uh, the package is named uh, the package is named sorry, okay. It's running okay. So the package is named Flutter from Builder. I've provided an example. So basically an example is just another Flutter app inside your package. So this is the example app, which I've written code that depends on my, on my package. Basically um, my, 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 my package itself is in lib. Example also has its own lib where I have the, the code written there. You'll notice that when I go to pubspec.yaml of the example of the example package, instead of uh, pulling the package from uh, from from pub.dev, I'm just pulling it from from the path of this folder. Basically, I'm just saying go back one directory and use that one because I want to test it with the latest version of my package. This maybe I'm not I may not have uh, published it yet, so. I'm using path so that I depend on this, the one in lib. So that's one thing to note while you are, you are making an example file, the example um, app. So this is basically the example app just showing how someone can use the package. It has quite a number of uh, form elements or form fields that someone can use. So I've, I've been using this to test to make sure that every new file I include or every new improvement I make, it's still compatible and still runs, doesn't break. So um, I will open my, my Git client here so that we see uh, where I am. So uh, another thing I was saying is uh, make sure that you, sorry, yeah, make sure that you, you merge, make sure that you, so I want to see here. Okay. Nice. Okay. Make sure that you that you tag your your packages. So basically, after publishing, you just create a new tag and 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 tag the the specific version at at the point of of releasing your package. 
So let me just, first of all, go back. Local changes. Let me, first of all, pull changes that are online. Okay. So I've made a couple of changes since uh, the last the last version I did was uh, for this for this uh, I'm developing a new pre-release version. So the last version I released was uh, was version uh, four point zero point zero three release version seven. So I want to release another one right now as we as we as we can see. So the first example, the first thing I will do. Is just to make sure that my code is, is well formatted. So I'll do a flutter format. So I want to format everything in my lib folder. So you'll, you'll realize that some, some files are changed, are, others are unchanged. Basically, it's just formatted. Let's just look at let me look at our Git to our Git client to see to see what what changes have happened. So some things seem to be hanging a bit here. Can I still be heard, Maureen? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, uh, Dan, would you please repeat what you said? Did you ask a question? Hey, Dan Vick. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan Vick. Can you still hear me? Seems like it's dropped off. Ah, okay. So do we have any questions for him in the meantime? Maybe you can write them on the chat. Let me just do a random job check, see if everybody is here. Let me try Kerone. Kerone, can you hear us? Yeah, I can get you. Seems everybody is in. So I think what we will just asking you. If anybody has a question, maybe for Danvik, because it seems we've lost him, and I think he'll be back soon. So if you have a question, you can put it in the chat, or you can just yeah, you can put it in the chat so that when Danvik is on, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to him or we give him the question.
Uh, so in the meantime, do we have any any inputs regarding the topic of today? Uh, Kerone, I think you've published some apps. What input, some packages. So what inputs do you have regarding the topic? You can give us a few insights as we wait for Danbrick maybe to dial in again. Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, uh, from uh, Danbrick's presentation, I think things are quite interesting. Uh, let me just highlight them very quickly. Uh, one, the issue to do with sense. Uh, from my hand, I think I haven't been uh, quite keen on licenses, and I think uh, from his explanation, it's quite clear that uh, it can be a real mess when it comes to legal issues if you don't have a license. Uh, secondly, when you're dealing with uh, packages, it's now clear that uh, you are on the internet of uh, other people's applications. So uh, it really demands quite some, uh, some level of uh, caution uh, to do with um, versionings, that is semantic versioning, so that uh, because really you can imagine if I have breaking images every other time, uh, that I think the stability and would be lost. Uh, and then you can imagine it's like you're, you're carrying on your shoulders uh, the projects of other people that are running on top of uh, your phone. So it's quite uh, uh, interesting that uh, most most of the, the times you will find really keen, uh, watching such issues. And then, Lastly, on uh, formatting, yeah? you see, if, uh, if in some way uh, you can handle, you can just apply what. Um, can you hearing? Oh, can be uh, thanks. Sir. I think he's back. Uh, I'm done. Uh, so, as I was finishing up, uh, so if you can apply uh, the same. Uh, formatting and uh, the same caution when uh, working on your files and everything else. More and more fun developing on your own projects, even if they are not packages, really. So I think if you can apply the same um, save values, and, uh, use uh, the same uh, conventions, that would be fine. Okay, uh, take over, done. Over to you. Hi guys, sorry about that. I was uh, off for a bit. Uh, my compass issue, I don't know if it's internet or the, the comp itself. So I think what we were doing is we were uh, formatting our code. So after formatting, we saw that some of the things maybe I, I may not have done correctly. So formatting will just out of format the code for me. I don't, worry, I don't have to worry about that. It will go to every DART file and format it. So for example, let's look at what has been uh, formatted. Uh, here I have some basically indentation issues which it resolved for me. So that's one of the advantages of using Flutter format. And such a thing would have uh, yanked a few points of my, of my uh, package because uh, it's, they are very keen on that. So that's the reason why they included this specific uh, functionality. Then um, the next thing I can do is uh, now I'm trying to, I'm releasing the, we are trying to release version. Let me just come to pub spec. So our current version is uh, 4.0.03.7. Uh, so the next thing we will do is uh, let me go to 3.8. So I can see here there are a few changes that have been included in some of the dependencies that I may want. So I'll just do a dependency upgrade basically get, get the latest version, just confirm that they, they're not breaking. For example, I can see here, this one is gone from 2.0.13 to 2.1.0. I may want to test this out first. I may not want to, since the minor version has changed, there may be breaking changes. So I may not want to include it right now, but be very keen on when including, make sure that you have the latest version. So I'll do a pub get just to get the latest version also. So before I, before I include documentation, I will first of all, just try to do a dry run, pub publish dash dash dry run and see uh, 
what what the dry run will, will let me know of if there are any warnings to be I should be notified about. So you'll notice that a change log file does not mention the current version which I'm trying to release. So basically it will tell me to, to basically uh, make that include include the changes in the next the next version I'm trying to run. Also, the other thing I do, I have a, quite a number of tests. I can do Flutter tests. Uh, if I do Flutter tests, it will basically run all the tests in my test 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 folder just to make sure that everything is still working and the tests are passing. So it takes a bit of time. So while it's testing, one thing you can do while it's doing that, we can go to our change log. So basically what we need to do is include the latest version So uh, today is the 21st of November, just to, for, for record purposes, then we include version eight because that's what was missing. And then uh, the advantage of tagging is that you will know where exactly, where exactly you left off the changes. I think I may have forgotten to include the, the last tag. So basically, I think some of the changes I may have done is I've included uh, this line. So this will help me, will help anyone using the app to know that I have included this new change. And I can also copy just from, from, my, from my commit messages, I can know which versions I included. So I think this is where I had left off. So basically this, I think this is where I had uh, released the new, the old version. So I will just tag it from zero point. I'll name it point seven because this is the old version. So you can see uh, now I'm trying to release uh, point, point, point eight. So I'll copy most of what I have here uh, all the commit messages I have here that I find useful to be able to release to the next version. So here, um, some of these things are just um, clean up. So they may not they may not be very of of interest to the user because they're just making changes to the you're just making changes to the demo app to make sure that to make sure that everything is working so that if anyone uh, cop copies the or tries to run the example file, they can be able to run it, the example pack, the example uh, app. So then finally, after doing this, I've included the documentation for this current version. I've included everything. The tests have passed all of them. So the next one, I can just try to do a dry run again to see if there's anything else that I may have left out. So the first time you'll run, you'll try to publish an app. It will it will redirect you to a browser and ask you to enter your the login for your Google account. So that's where you'll get it. But for me, I have already logged in, so it doesn't ask me. So I think there are no issues there. So what I'll do, this I will do in the live. Basically, just I'll just push everything here and do a, an actual publish because this is a pre-release version. Chances are I may not, I'm not likely to break uh, someone who is working on the stable branch. So I'll just do a publish. It will ask me if I'm sure which we are. And then it will upload the changes. So I can come to my, so if you go to pub.dev, you go to pub.dev, look for Flutter from Builder. Uh, 
open it. We see we have the new version already put there. So the thing about scores is that it usually takes a bit of time to do the analysis. Then it will give me a score based on whatever it has found on this new version that I have released. So um, I may also just come here to my to my Git client, maybe publish these uh, changes. Uh, so maybe I'll just I'll just say I we released. But this is not the best commit message. <laughs> we'll release 4.0.0, pre-release version 8, and then commit that. Come to our commit to, to our commits and tag it. Uh, there's an advantage of tagging of tagging your commits. Basically, you can know which 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 specific commit was at which point. So it's very important. And this is also something that uh, pub.dev will be will be checking especially if your app if your package is going to be a flutter favorite this is the thing they're checking they're checking if the current tag you have in on github is equivalent to the to the tag that you have on uh, on pub.dev so 3.8 copy that we have that as a message. Now we can push the code. Push plus all the tags. Make sure that everything is okay. Everything is pushed. It's current to the next, to the new version. Now, uh, basically that's how we'll do it. Now we've published our next version. All we're waiting for is the analysis to be done and we'll be good to go. Basically someone who uh, even at this point, someone else who wants to use the latest version can download it because it's already available. Then another thing is uh, usually advisable for you. If you're using this, you can go to just, uh, you can go to uh, uh, GitHub where you're, or where you're posting your code. Go to the current version we are working on is version four, which is the next version and then look at the releases. So this is the latest release. It's also good to include uh, this, this change, the, your change log in. Uh, it's also good to include the, your changes in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in GitHub so that anyone who is looking, instead of pub, if someone else is doing it on GitHub, it's good for, for you to, to release it. I may also come here and just create an ini for it, a tag for it. Maybe I can include all this information so that if anyone is viewing this this uh, this package on GitHub instead, they can see all these um, changes that I've done. So include the, all the information there. Say that this is a previous version, then publish so that anyone who, has, who will open this will also see that this is what we've done in this version. And I think that is that um, from, from the, for the demo. Um, so uh, if you want any resources, I will share this so you can just click on these links and look at how you would be able to publish your app. Also, the shortest way, these are links that are just from, let me go back to pub.dev. So these are just links that are here in help. You can, how to develop packages, how to publish a package. Basically all this information you can just find here. So if you open pub.dev, any, any, anywhere you'll just be able to click on these links and see the whole procedure of how to develop an app. I may not have gone as deep as this documentations go, but that is where you'd, you'd find the documentation. So I think uh, for me it's to sign off. My name is Danvik. Again, you can find me on Twitter if you have any questions or you can look at my GitHub profile. It includes uh, this and other interesting uh, things about Flutter. Uh, if you go to my GitHub page, you'll find some interesting resources that you can also use. So thank you, uh, Maureen, for hosting. And uh, if there are any questions, maybe I may have missed when I was out there, I will have a look and we can do the Q&A if time allows. Thank you.
Maureen. Uh, thank you, Dan, for the wonderful presentation. So, do we have any anyone in the meeting with a question? I think we can take two. Then the rest maybe they'll reach out to you, Dan, if that's okay. So, any two questions? There are a few in the chat, Maureen. Okay, so uh, Danvik, Candy is asking, uh, what's your take on those people who do not include the package versions on their pub spec YAML? For example, the form builder, they omit the, the version. Is this advisable? Danvik not, or anyone else? I, it's, not, it's not advisable. I think what she's talking about is when you go to pub.dev, Oh, so uh, sorry, not pub.dev, but pubspec.yaml. Let's say, for example, I, I'm using this package called validators and I remove this. It is still valid, uh, valid code, valid uh, dependency or write, so for example, other people write any, but this is not the best because if someone introduces, let's say, from goals from version three to version four, since you've specified any, or you've not specified uh, any. So it may bring down the changes that are in the next version, which you are not ready to start working with. So it may break your code. So just whatever, whenever possible, just include the version that the, of, of, the, of the dependencies that you are you're using. It's very advisable you do that. Also, uh, when you're trying to update packages, as I said, uh, you have to look at which version are you moving from, from this version to the next? If you're moving, let's, let's say, an, uh, the patch versions, basically as I was, I think um, I had um, someone explaining about semantic versioning. So this is usually the major version. This is the minor version, and this one is the patch. So if you do a small, a small change, may, maybe you fix a small bug that is in your app, this is what you'll change. So you'll do like uh, the next version from this will be, like 2.0.14, then that will be the next version. If you do a major change, basically that includes new features, then you will do 2.1.0. So basically you'll have jumped to the next minor version. And then if you do breaking changes, let's say for example, the API, the whole API has changed, everything is new. Basically whoever is using it, maybe you may also need to include a migration guide for someone who is going from the, the version two to three. Now here you will have 3.0.13. Uh, so be very careful about, about, about versions. Make sure you use the correct versions. Maybe you're not ready to do, start doing, doing integration for the new version. Maybe you don't have time. So just maintain the old one as long as you're sure it's stable and you, you, it's working for you. So I can see another question from Candy. If you wish to contribute to a particular package, how do you go about it? So um, mostly you will just go to, um, you can, number one, I, I hope my screen is still being seen. So number one, you can fork the package. Forking the package just means that you may you want to, you want to have that package as part of your GitHub uh, account. For example, let me try to see if there are any uh, packages that I may, that may be of interest that I may have worked on recently. Let me see, let me see, let me see. This one I'm thinking about. Oh, so this one. Uh, this package I, I, I forked from this, uh, from this uh, user, uh, 4QRS0, RSO. So, uh, Forking it means it, you copy it to your own GitHub account. Then you can come here, uh, basically download this version or clone this version and have it in your local file or just come here. Let's say they have um, an issue in their readme and you want to fix it. A very good place to start if you want to start helping is going to the readme. If someone has a small typo, go there and like fix that typo. And basically after that, after you've made a change, Let's say, for example, I have changed something here. I do, I do my commit message, said I've uh, updated readme. 
And finally, after doing that, let's just take a hypothetical that we'll just roll it back. Contributions are welcome. Let me just put something else because why not? Then update readme. So there's that. Then I'm committing to my own copy of, of that package. So finally, after, after I've been able to make this, this uh, change, sorry, let me just close this for now. After I've been able to make this change and I've made it to my own version, I can go, sorry. Mm. So I can go here and create a pull request. Pull request is basically I'm asking them, the maintainer of that package, whom I forked from, uh, I want to pull the change I made to your to your package, basically, which they will come in their package. Uh, let's go back here. They will come to your package and see a new pull request here, so they can be able to view the pull request. So this for the, this is an example of someone who actually this is not what we've done, but an example of someone who made a change to form builder. So we look at the files they've changed, basically if there are any new changes. You see, like you can start by something small like this. Maybe there's a deprecation. Deprecation, you will help someone like migrate to the new version of Flutter. This is a very good, it's a one liner. Basically, you are sure that this is an error. This is this is something that you can contribute to. Then uh, show a merge request. So after seeing this and making sure that this is correct, I'll just be able to come here. So I can be able to basically review the code if I can give a comment. Maybe they, they may have not done things correctly. This is where you get feedback from maybe someone who is maintaining the package. They may be more experienced than you in using the package. So they will tell you, no, this is how you make the change. Or this, you can make two modifications before I merge it in. Then after which you just, the, the, the owner of the package will just merge in your change. And that is, and from there, I think you'll have seen that if, if, if you go to the uh, package information and you go to contributors, your name will now be there as one of the contributors of that package. So that is how you start and you gain confidence and you, you, you go on like becoming a useful, becoming, becoming a member of the society who is, uh, who is actually helping others. I think that's that. Yeah, just to add on before I take Bavia's question, Bavia's question, I hope I, I pronounced the, na the name right, uh, concerning the contribution. If you take a look at most open source, you'll see they usually have the contribution readme files. So from there, you can always take a look because there are usually the rules or the regulations on how those people want their code to be, to be submitted, the PRs to be submitted and what you should write specifically because so from there you can always read the rules there how to create a merge request because your contribution can be just they can refuse to accept your contribution not because it is wrong but because you've not followed their rules so the rules are usually laid down so it's really good thing so the best place like the invite of said is to quote the readme all the regulations of how on the rules on how to contribute take a look at that and then you start as with small thing like fixing the typo, just like Dan I was saying. So, like I've said, you're supposed just to take a look at the contribution document or the readme. If it's, there's no contribution guidelines, you take, take a look at the readme. They usually advise you now to do those things. And uh, to finally, you can also check. Usually, there are there are there are package there are issues called maybe maybe have been labeled help wanted. Basically, they need help or a good a good place to start is uh, any any issue written good fast issue so basically if you are new to that package like these are very easy things that you can do to help so if you start with those you will start gaining confidence on like even working on the big uh, major major changes 
So anything right, uh, which is, you, as you can see, it's good for newcomers. Basically, if you are not, you are, you are not familiar with open source very well, and you find a, source, a package like this, you can do, go to the once labeled good first issue. Those ones are very easy to do, very easy to fix, and you will have already started your journey towards contributing to open source. Okay. There was another question. Yeah, okay, it was concerning the, the video. Yeah, it will be uploaded in the, on YouTube and you'll get it there. So it will take maybe a day or two, we'll put it there. Okay, thank you all for joining and for the questions. So if anyone else has any other questions then i think we'll reach out to danvik he has shared his twitter link and the github link so feel free to reach out to him otherwise thank you danvik for making it a success and everyone else who joined thank you and welcome to our december which is our last meetup we'll communicate about the date and uh, how to join and everything so thank you all